Greetings and welcome to the program. I'm DK Ronstar. We are going in depth on the role of sport to weave together the fabric of our existence as well as different possibilities that can be accessed when you take the decision to immerse yourself in sport as a business with the UWI, ranked among the top 1% of universities globally by Times Higher Education. We do so now with the acting head of the Open Campus Academy of Sport, Kervin Jean. Welcome, Mr. Jean. Thank you for joining us. How are you doing? I am fine. So far, so good. How are things on your end? I'm all right, thank you. Thank you for joining us. But I want to start off with answer the person who says that sports is just fun and games. Oh, that one is, huh, don't get me started. Um, I think that is why we are where we are today, because we still have this mindset that sport is fun and games. Even in the worldwide view where sport is one of the highest ranked industries uh, based on 2018 figures. Um, seven, it's based on 2018 figures, it's a $700 billion industry. And we have not tapped into its full potential as yet. So I don't think when you look at a $700 billion industry, and I'm talking about annual income, that you can say that it is fun and games. Um, I think we just need to change our mindset and accept the fact that sport is big business and a more or less developing industry in this part of the world that we have not capitalized on. And I think it's important to send that, that tone before we get started. Thank you, and, and I'm, I'm glad that you're able to kind of set that context and ask you to do so a little further in terms of, you spoke about mindset, you spoke about capitalizing on opportunities. How do we do that with sport as a vehicle for change, a microcosm for society, or, put, or even something to show the potential of society? I think it starts with education. And I think that's where you and the faculty of sport comes in. Um, because of this culture that we have of looking at sport as fun and games, we haven't been able to change society's perception, even mindset about that. Even That is why even though we see the amount of money athletes make internationally, even our local athletes, we still haven't been able to sell sport as a viable um, economic diversification option, simply because we don't see it that way. So I think it starts with education first and foremost, letting persons see that one, sport is no longer fun and games that ended eons ago. Sport is actually a career path. It is a business, it is a profession. And the volunteerism and how we look at sport as something um, we do on the side that has to stop. And I think if you look at the sport participation rates at secondary school, it shows you have high participation rates from forms one to three. And when it comes to CXC and CAPE, you know, we have a steep decline in participation simply because parents tell their kids, hey, it's time for you to focus on your studies. And that should not be the case. And I think that is why our sport in this region has suffered because we haven't included sport and academia historically. So I think it starts off with this conversation and engaging and educating the population. Let them see that how important sport is, and we're not only talking about as a profession, uh, looking at sport as a career, but we're also talking about in terms of wellness, physical fitness, and changing lifestyles. I think that is the important conversations that we want to have at this point. And, we, and I'm, I'm glad that we're having this conversation with you, the head of the St. Augustine Academy of Sport. So that takes us into the faculty of sport. What can a student entering this area of professional development expect or look forward to? Oh, you can look forward to a lot. Um, first off, we look at the faculty. We know the faculty is one of the newest faculties across the university, um, just going to our third and fourth year. Um, what you do have across the faculty, and that is the four academies, is a highly professional cadre of staff that students can tap into. You know, gone are the days when you had sport programs being offered by the university, and they were taught by individuals who did not have a background in sport. Now you have dedicated sport professionals within the faculty of sport that students can access. Additionally, we do have not only academic and technical programs, but we also have what we call a lifestyle change. So not only are you involved in the theoretical components of your course, but we also have a practical experience that we offer to students at the faculty of sport. So not only do you get the theory, but you can also apply it across the various areas of operations of our faculty. And of course, when we say faculty, we are referring to four academies of sport. Here at St. Augustine, we offer two um, BSCs, that is the BSC in sports coaching, 
the BSA in sports kinetics. These are very, I would think, needed degrees when you look at the landscape of sport, especially in Trinidad and Tobago. The sports coaching targets those individuals, of course, who are on a coaching pathway who may be interested in coaching or are existing national coaches. Um, whereas the sports kinetics looks at more sports science and also sets a foundation for advanced research in the areas of sport. We also have a certificate in the arts and science of coaching, of course, targeting individuals who are one, coaches who desire to be coaches, or even individuals who want to pursue um, entrepreneurship across areas such as personal training, physical education of the sort, all of which give you what you need to advance your own career in this fast-paced and fast-developing area of sport. Subsequent to that, at St. Augustine, what we do have is a very uh, a historical a sporting culture. So not only do we have the student games, but we have a number of um, competitive teams that are formed at the academy, football, swimming, basketball, volleyball. So students don't only get the theory, they also get the practical component in terms of playing. So you don't have to, if you're an athlete, a professional athlete, a high performance athlete, you don't have to give up your sport. You can also pursue your education whilst training and learning to advance your skill sets at the university. And it goes for the faculty as well. I well, I'm, I've never looked at sport as a profession in terms of jumping in as a professional athlete, but I think being involved in sports and different uh, extramural activities outside of what I was doing academically helped me to lock in and say, okay, well, in terms of time management, focus, getting ahead of steam off. So, like, there was a pool that at one of the schools that I went to, and I used to enjoy going there, trying to make the first ripples and just dealing with things to kind of uh, uh, empty, empty my, my, my mental space for a point in time, which would help me doing what I was doing. And I think we want to get back to that point in terms of opening the mind space because many times people may think, if I'm not an athlete, I'm going to be a coach or in administration. But I'll ask you to give us an idea of different career opportunities when we return from this break. We're speaking with the head of the St. Augustine Academy of Sport, Mr. Kerwin Jean. Stay with us, we return with more. Welcome back. We are going in depth on sport as a vehicle for many opportunities. We're doing so with the head of the St. Augustine Academy of Sport, Mr. Kerwin Jha. And Mr. Jha, I want you to speak right now to the person who is going through school and they're wondering, okay, next steps. What can I do with something uh, getting into the Academy of Sport or even their caregivers, the people who are in charge of them at this point, saying, that's what you're going to do. What you could do with that? Answer those people, please. Oh, um, as I was saying, the possibilities are limitless and the avenues for advancement in sport, given that it's a vastly growing industry, they are limitless. If you're coming into the academy, what it will equip you with is the skills to choose a particular pathway. Now, again, you are not constrained to the environment you are in because there are a number of professionals world over. We have sports psychologists, we have physiotherapists, you have sports law, you have sports medicine, you have sports science, you have sports data analysts, you have sports broadcasters, and I could call a list of names that would stretch from St. Augustine to Port of Spain for you. These are all specialized areas for the study of sport. And again, it all fits within what I want to do as an individual. A lot of us tend to be sport personalities. We are sportsmen, we are sportswomen. We were coached and we already have a base upon which we can operate. So a lot of us sports, we tend to take those same individuals, re them, into the system and you have those same individuals serving as that sport administrators, sport coaches, again, sport support individuals. That is okay. But beyond, when you look at the industry itself and how it is developing, there is a need for specialists. And we're talking about sport administrators and we're talking about competent coaches, competent and qualified coaches across various disciplines. In terms of administration, there are a number of areas of specialty within administration. Of course, you have accounting, you have human resource management, you also have components of administration, which is sport administration management. So there are a number of possibilities. I think where it starts off with the conversation and academic advising, which is done at the university to help individuals identify possible pathways that they can pursue and the courses that fit that pathway. 
And do you see the opportunity or is it possible for minors to be done within the academy? And I say that because someone may be in a science field and they're dealing with nutrition, but they say, okay, well, I want to specialize, I want to look at nutrition for athletes or high performance athletes, or someone may be in the engineering field and they say, okay, well, I think I want to go into uh, creating, designing and creating equipment that athletes may use. They know what they want, but it isn't out there yet, so we can design these things and create them. So are those possibilities available at the UWI? Oh, very much. Well, it's a good thing you mentioned that because what we have done recently uh, through our curriculum committee, we have actually looked at the majors. So the BSc Sports Coaching, Sport Leadership and Management, which is offered at the Open Campus, and Sports Business Management, which is offered at Mona. We have looked at those majors and created minors. So individuals who may not necessarily be with the faculty of sport and may be registered within another faculty could always cross-register and take those minors as well. Additionally, you may, be, you may be doing the sports coaching, the bachelor's in sports coaching, and you may wish to minor in sports kinetics or even sport leadership and management as well. So these options are open. And we also have one of courses that we do. Um, in terms of working with the national governing bodies, we have opted to assist them with technical development as well. So one of the things you find the faculty will do, we would host seminars, we would hold workshops across specialized areas such as sport administration, sport policy, um, sport business development. So these are also open to individuals to register for. Likewise, the minors and other certificate and professional development courses. At the faculty right now, we have the sport broadcasting cohort two going on right now. And that is a professional certificate that is offered at the level of the faculty. And these will constantly be developed again as the need arises or as persons within the sporting, the national framework, as these skill sets are required we work as fast to adapt and develop them as well. And I think some of these can be game changers and I appreciate the fact that it doesn't seem as though there's a static offering. So you're looking at what is needed and then you're looking to see how you can fill that gap because gaps are uh, becoming more apparent as the world turns. But even before I start to ask about some of the prerequisites for that, the application process, when is it open? How long does it go through till? What are some of those things that are needed? Walk me through that process, thank you. So applications are currently open. The application deadline is 31st of July. Uh, for applications, you can go to sta.uv.edu slash apply, and you will get the information that require for applications as well. Again, I repeat, sta.uv.edu slash apply and you would get the relevant information for the program that you are interested in as well. Um, depend on which program you are going, the entry requirements are different. Um, for the certificate program, for instance, it is the one-year program, which is a certificate in arts and science. We do have three pass, a minimum three pass requirement, English, math, and the science subject, general proficiency, grades one, two, and three. For the BSCs, on the other hand, again, that information you would get online, but I'm just giving you a quick synopsis here. Uh, say, for instance, for the general requirements for the BSCs, uh, which is the sports coaching and sports kinetics, and I'm reading right off a pamphlet, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> it's a minimum of five uh, passes at CSEC and CXC general proficiency grades one or two. And of course, we know that is pre-1998. Um, there is also the level three from June 1998 as well. Again, it's an extensive listen because we know for the period of COVID, some changes were made to the entry requirements. So you do have the COVID entry requirements as well. So I engage, I would actually inform everybody of the website and you go on the website as well. Again, the application website to get the relevant information for the program that you are interested in. And what I think I'm hearing from you as well, Mr. Jean, is that there, there's a possibility of building yourself or building capacity in a modular manner because if there is a certificate that you just need three passes for you get that this means that you're now in a better position to apply for something else that you may not have been able to uh, previously uh, am i right in in thinking that oh and that is correct so the certificate in arts and science for instance if you don't have the minimum entry requirements for the bscs you can then register for that one year certificate for the arts and science of coaching and once completed successfully you can use that degree that certificate sorry to matriculate into the degree of your choice and that makes so that is that is something that is beautiful and that 
is also helping to expand the mindset and possibilities. So saying, okay, well, I can do this. This is something that I can do at the UWI. But in terms of that mindset, though, speak to me about cohorts. Uh, so are there any cases that you would say one success stories or just looking at people and saying, yes, the way that they think about what it is they're doing has changed from starting the cohort to matriculating out? Oh, and that, we get that a lot um, in terms of working with students. And again, being at the faculty, you have access, as I indicated, to a list, an extensive listing of professionals. So even speaking to individual students, and generally I teach with students, I teach students in one of the sport leadership and management at the open campus I teach as well. So in terms of interacting with students and having them see the broader picture, a lot of persons would have come into these um, BSCs as well, and they wouldn't have, they didn't have an open mindset. For them, it was, you know, I'm just doing this, not to get a job, but just to see I have a first degree. I like sport, so I'm just pursuing a degree in sport so that I have that additional knowledge. And when they come into the classes and you interact with them and they understand how limitless the possibilities are with that first degree, because it basically opens doors, a number of those students are flabbergasted and they will tell you they did not see that way. So much so that we are currently trying to develop a new um, line of MSCs to allow our students to have a developmental pathway, understanding that they have then chosen to move forward with a career in sport. All right, and the last minute we have Mr. Jean closing words once again for potential students or people who might influence potential students about why this is a viable option to take. Thank you. So I have a number of them, but what I would say is that sport is no longer fun and games. If you are looking for a career, more so if you are already involved in sport heavily, it makes, it makes no sense wasting that experience that you already have. Take that experience and turn it into something that you can build a profession out of and teach others. Additionally, you need to understand that there are. And I think that is a beautiful point to end on, looking at the fact that you can put paper behind your passion and say, OK, well, it's more than just for fun and games. But we want to thank you very much, Kevin Jean, acting head, St. Augustine Academy of Sport, looking at UWI Game Changers, sports as a vehicle for change. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Ronster. Thank you so much for joining us.